I have a stack of CDs here that I want to turn into audio files. I'm going to try out three free software titles that can do that and pick the one I like best that's coming up on Thrifty AV. I love CDs, but they're not always that convenient. Sometimes it's easier to deal with an MP3 file or a FLAC file. Now I want to check out Windows Media Player, CDEX, and Exact Audio Copy, and see how each of those deals with MP3s. Let's start with Windows Media Player. Digitizing with Windows Media Player is super easy as long as you have the right settings. Let's go into those settings. It's under Organize and then Options. Go to Rip Music. Select the folder you want to put these in. The formats that are available are Windows Media Audio, Windows Media Audio Pro, Variable Bitrate, Windows Media Lossless, MP3, WAV, ALEC lossless and FLAC lossless. Now I always go with the best quality on my MP3s which uh, is 320 kbps. These are hard to distinguish from lossless files. Okay you also want to go over to library and retrieve additional information from the internet. The reason you want to do that is so it will populate the title of the disc, the artist, and the songs. Going back to RIP Music, you do not want to click RIP CD automatically because you want to wait for the library additional information to load before you do the RIP. And sometimes this will start ripping before that information loads. Turn that one off. Okay, now simply load up the CD that you want to RIP. Okay, once the CD loads, uh, then you'll notice that the uh, artist, the title, and the tracks load up and it starts playing. If you don't want it to automatically start playing, there's probably a setting there. I just usually turn the volume down. Okay, and all you got to do is click RIP CD. And then, boom, it starts ripping. Now I have two optical discs, so I can actually load up another CD and it found the information about it in a hurry and all this is correct and then click RIP CD on it. So I have two CDs ripping right now at the same time. When the rip status all says ripped to library, you're ready to move on to the next CD. I recommend you right click on that CD and then click eject instead of using the button on the DVD burner. And the reason why is if you use the button on the DVD burner, it does not always recognize that the CD has been changed. Of course, loading it, you can use that button. And it's retrieving the information for this CD, and I'm going to go ahead and rip it. Going into the folder where your audio files are stored, the main folder is going to be Artist, and when you click on that, you will find the title, and when you click on that, you will find your songs. Windows does store some metadata here, artist, album, year, and that's not the year for the original album, that's the year for the remaster, uh, genre, length of the song, bit rate, uh, and some other information. You can go in here and alter these tags if you want to, if you find an error or you don't think that it uh, stored it in the right genre. And you can actually do that with multiple tracks. Details, go into the genre, and change all those songs to grunge. 
And now any of these songs I click on now say genre grunge. In most cases, Windows will also store the album art. Uh, this says large and small, but these seem to be the exact same file. The next digitizing software I want to talk about is CDEX. It's available from CDEX.mu. It is open source. There is a stable version. There's a portable version. It uses the lame encoder for MP3. It supports FLAC, AUG Vorbis, and a bunch of other file formats. System requirements uh, are various forms of Windows. I started using this with Windows XP way back when. I'm going to download the latest version 2.24 with the installer. Before I do a rip with CDEX, I want to go into the options, settings, and take a close look. Okay, thread priority normal, that's good. Encoder lame, MP3, that's what I want. CDEX supports variable bitrate. Uh, so I can go from 32k BPS to a maximum of 320. I'm just going to keep it at 320 by setting that both as the minimum and maximum bitrate. I am going to select on the fly MP3 encoding. Uh, because I pretty much have variable bitrate turned off, I'm just going to leave the VBR quality set to 2. And I want to do 44.1. For the CD database, I see that they already have the remote FreeDB set. I'll make sure it works here shortly. Okay, I want to store my recorded tracks the same place I was keeping uh, my Windows Media recorded tracks. I'll also do that for WAVE to MP3 conversions. I'm not really worried about the temp directory and I'm not going to normalize volume. I've launched CDEX. I'm going to go ahead and load up this disk here. Okay, Windows Media Player tried to start. I gotta fix that where it doesn't automatically launch. Now I have no artist, no title, and no track names here. So I wanna look up this artist. But when I try to access FreeDB, it came up blank. So what I'm gonna do is go into Options, go into Settings, go to Remote FreeDB, and try a different server. Message opening connection. Fail to make connection, please check network proxy settings. Go to remote free DB, and I am gonna look for a remote server online that'll work. I found one, and I'm gonna have to manually enter the information for it. All right, uh, they want my email address, but I'm not gonna show you this part. Okay, and now, it showed up. When I clicked rock though, nothing filled in. Let's try the classical one. All right, uh, Billy Joel, Piano Man, Rock, 1973, and there's all the tracks. Now I'm going to extract to compressed audio files, and it's extracting one file at a time. Now while that's going, I've launched a second uh, CDEX. I want to try to uh, add a drive here and it just is not seeing my second CD drive. Unlike Windows Media Player, I'm not going to be able to rip multiple CDs at the same time because CDEX is only seeing one of my optical drives. That's kind of a problem. Now the metadata that's on these databases, this GNU database, is uh, submitted by people. Sometimes the titles are in all caps, so there are sometimes issues with these uh, publicly editable databases. Okay, looking at uh, the folder where I'm keeping my new music, there's Billy Joel. Uh, the one that I just added is Piano Man. Uh, this one put 
track numbers in front of the track titles, which is different than how Windows Media Player does it. Let's look at some of these tags, and the tags look good. The next program I want to talk about is a favorite in the audio community. It's called Exact Audio Copy, often abbreviated to EAC. This is freeware, uh, and it offers a, a feature called Accurate Rip, which uh, prevents errors that you might get with Windows Media or even CDEX. It says it supports all sorts of CD and DVD drives. It does extract music data, not just the audio. And I was taken to Foss Hub to do the download. And I'm going to download the one with the installer. All right, one cool feature about Exact Audio Copy it tests your CD ROM drives on first launch and it detected both of them. And you have a choice of I prefer to have accurate results or only speed is important. Of course, accuracy is more important to me than speed. Okay, the testing has completed. It says that my best drive is my DVD-ROM and the second best drive is my Blu-ray drive. I'm going to go ahead and go with an MP3 compression scheme. Now they're saying I need to download the lame executable. On SourceForge there is a lame installation for Windows. So I'm going to install this. I've loaded up a CD here and I'm going to try to get some meta information for that CD. And it wants me to pay $7.99. So I'm going to pick a different provider. So I'm going to go to EAC, go to Metadata Options. And instead of this GD3 Metadata plugin, I'm going to go to Built in FreeDB Engine. And it found the information. Golden Earring, CD is Switch, year 1975. Okay, it is now reading the track, and it is reading a WAV file. Now, the big question is, will it convert this WAV file to an MP3 file using uh, the lame encoder? and it appears that it is working. It did not create a subfolder uh, for these songs. So I'm going to have to create a subfolder uh, to store these mp3 files of what I'm encoding here. Okay, when the rip finished I got this status and error messages. All nine tracks were accurately ripped, and here's the detail on those nine tracks. But then it says no track could be verified as accurate. You may have a different pressing from the ones in the database. All right, so I'm going to have to go in here and create a folder. And this is Frank Marino. I'm going to get rid of these temp files. I don't know why I left them behind. And I've been going through the menu here looking for some way to create subfolders. And I'm just not finding it. So if someone is familiar with EAC and they know how to create folders and subfolders for artist and title, uh, go ahead and tell me in the comments because that would help uh, make this easier to use. Every time I load up the disk, it loads, and then File Explorer opens up, and it spits the disk back out. So I think this might be a Windows issue. Windows Media Player made it easy to rip CDs. It extracted the information I wanted, and it categorized them by uh, artist and title. With CDEX, getting the information about the disks required a little bit of research, and it only recognized one of my optical drives, so I couldn't rip from two different disks at the same time. With Exact Audio Copy, I ran into several issues that made it more challenging. I had to load a separate piece of software in order to encode MP3 files. The database had to be changed 
to a separate database in order to get free information about the CDs that I was inserting. Uh, when I did create MP3 files, it just dumped them into the folder without creating subfolders for artist and title. If there's a way to fix that, let me know. And finally, when I tried to use uh, my other optical drive, when I inserted a disk in it and loaded it up, it just spit it right back out again. I don't know if that was an issue with Exact Audio Copy or with Windows doing that. Uh, maybe someone out there can give me a clue on that. But by far, the easiest way to rip MP3s was with Windows Media Player. So that's probably what I will be using. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Thank you to my patrons for supporting this channel. And remember, stay thrifty, everyone.